what is consciousness? Oh, well, <laughs> um, uh, consciousness, like, it's one of the biggest questions of our age. Um, but luckily you have a graphic designer here. <laughs> 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 If someone came up to you and introduced themselves as a graphic designer, what does that mean? What do you expect from that? Um, honestly, that could mean a whole multitude of things at this point. Uh, it is a field that encompasses a lot of things. Uh, I think on a very basic point though, it is just using a visual medium to communicate a message and knowing how to do that. So let's say, two graphic designers meet each other. What is that conversation? Well, uh, you know, there's probably gonna be some common basis for uh, uh, things you would like to talk about. Uh, and <laughs> wow, um, I know for myself, I would be very, very nervous. I have a lot of imposter syndrome and, but you know, you, you talk about work you've done, you've, want to share the work you've done and you talk about you know the processes and things that you did together right yeah well i mean and it's kind of a weird question because i feel like you know we're talking about the visual arts you know and mm -hmm. and, and this happens to musicians a lot too where they get asked well tell us about your album you know and they're like well i i told you it, it it's in the album <laughs> you know I, I said everything i wanted to if it could be said in words. You just say it in words, right? Right. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, you, you want to share ideas. You want to share thoughts, and sometimes that happens visually rather than through spoken word. And but speaking amongst graphic designers, I bet it's like a lot like any other industry where you talk about bad clients, you talk about great clients, you talk about upcoming jobs. You know. Sure. Uh, yeah. Well, so so you went to Columbia College, Chicago. Uh, uh, and you got a degree, uh, right? Uh, and, and BFA, yeah. Right. And um, what did that, that involve exactly? I mean, it was a four year program. I originally went in for illustration, and then uh, I realized that the program that they had for illustration and graphic design, it basically just had the same roots of the same classes and everything. And um, I started having to take classes such as typography and um, things in that vein. And what does that mean, typography? Typography is the study of type, um, like what constitutes a letter and basically every font, every letter, everything. Every time you see things written down on a page, that was people had to sit down and think about how to actually design every single element of that type. Mm. And so, you know, it is something that people take for granted where like, you know, fonts are free, you know, but no, that's entire teams of people working on that in a lot of cases. Helvetica, you know, it's funny if you ever see like photos of people working on Helvetica, it's just like, it looks like a people developing the atomic bomb. They're like in a business suits and everything hovering around tables and Really? And yeah. it's not what you expected, right? No, like no, like, not at all. You know, one thing I love to ask is, you know, take me through the grind, you know, in, in the sense that there was this vision you had of, you know, going into art, but eventually you were met with the reality of it. And, and, mm. and was there a humbling experience? Was there a moment where you had to kind of break down what you knew and, and start fresh? Like what? what I was mean, that like? Yeah, you know, um, coming out of college, you know, bright eyed and bushy tailed, you know, I thought I was going to kind of like rule the world immediately with my ideas that I learned in college, you know, right. and then, um, oh, you know, I was met with the harsh reality of just like people weren't responding to my application, people weren't responding to my resume. And like the first job I got out of college was like, what was it? It was uh, for a manufacturer of walk-in bathtubs, you oh, know, really? like, and, uh, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I wasn't doing grand design. I was doing, uh, you know, what was it? It was just like schematics for the width and shape of bathtubs and <laughs> okay, not necessarily yeah. artistic no, vision. Oh, no, uh... it was very soul crushing. And, uh, yeah, um, you know, it was a job nonetheless. 
I wouldn't say that. I only lasted there nine months before I couldn't take it anymore. And then I went into a freelance position. But, you know, like um, I, I it definitely had a humbling effect where I kind of realized that I wasn't probably going to be like the rock star designer that I thought it was going to be in my mind, you know, at least not at first. Right? I mean, no, it still could happen, I suppose. Well, I mean, let me I mean, because, you know, I I didn't go to school for arts, you know, and, and, and I was curious, uh, you know, because there's this a museum in Chicago uh, called Intuit, mm -hmm. um, and it's the Center for Intuitive and Outsider Art. And it basically features artists that have never gotten to school. Mm -hmm. um, and I walked in there and I mean, it was beautiful and it was breathtaking as well, but it, it, there was a considerable difference you know, in, in, mm. in just the style and you, you could tell, you know, that the, there's just a difference between, you know, uh, the schooled and the not. And, and, and so I was curious, like, uh, what is that secret whisper that, uh, you know, they charge you the thousands of dollars for? What is, what is it in, in art school that um, is given upon the students that has, you know, later affects their work in such a way? I suppose that a lot of it is that like you do have a lot of fundamentals drilled into your head at an art school, no matter uh, any kind of visual medium. I think that you will learn about like composition and the rule of thirds. You will learn about um, actual like definitions of things like line and, uh, and pattern and everything and how to in uh, incorporate those things into your work. and. Um, and you know and also you are getting like you know some sort of aesthetic trickle from the people teaching you you know like uh you will learn fundamentals like you know you will if you're going into like say drawing or painting you will learn how to draw the human body properly mm -hmm. you know and i think when it comes to uh, uh into it and outsider art together like uh in a way they're very much liberated from all of that where right. um they're kind of, uh, you know, free to do and express themselves however they want. But it, it is like a process of learning where um, the fascinating thing about outsider art is just like how you can become good at art and good in expression without a traditional uh, education. Right. Well, for example, what what is the proper way to try the human body? Like, what does that mean exactly? Yeah, that, that's a, that's a good question. I mean, is, to me, I don't think there is a proper way, but I think that there are fields of study that make you more observant on like what you'd want to draw about a human body. Hmm. Um, you know, I, I'm going through that drawing class right now where the teacher is, she's very, very keen on just like observation, which like, where a lot of times you're not even just drawing the body. You're just like, all right, without looking at the paper, just like follow the curvature of the human body, every little single detail, you know, and it doesn't matter what comes out on the page. It's a process of just like observation, Wow. you know? Um, so yeah, at the end, like, you know, uh, to circle back on your original question, I, I think that, uh, something you hear a lot is you got to know the rules in order to break the rules. Yeah. Whereas, uh, the outsider art would be people breaking the rules without knowing the rules in the first place, but somehow it wound up. All right. You know? Yeah. <laughs> right. I, and you mentioned having a teacher and, you know, uh, uh you know, I, I did want to ask, you know, when you have a professor and they're grading you, you know, they're, they're setting up some sort of schematic of good to bad. Right. Oh yeah. Uh, how exactly <laughs> is that determined in this sort of subjective realm of artistic expression? Like, you know, uh, w what are they basing it on? Oh, it's it's been a while for me, and I remember that this was grounds for many people being very upset because it's also like it does feel very unfair when you get like a B for something you get uh you tried incredibly hard on right um i remember for mine I, at least in a graphic design sense it was 
there was like some criteria where like yeah. you know you you actually had to demonstrate effort and things like you had to a big part of your grade was on how you're able to just present it to a crowd mm. you know and um times where you had to just do critiques and hang your art up on the wall or your designs or whatnot and you had to just field questions and you had to explain everything you had to ex just you know explain your aim and i think that was a big part of it of just like mm. this is what i was thinking this is the audience i was going to uh address and uh this was my uh strategy to to meet all of that again a, a difficult task for, yes. for people that perhaps are of the mind of of the visual arts and not right. the uh, yeah. the vocal presentation i mean um, and you, you also mentioned before when we talked before this that uh, there was an element of group critique. I think that would probably be like the biggest part of any sort of design or art school is the group critique, you know? Mm -hmm. That is where you get the best feedback. That is where you get the best ideas because that's when you get the rawest feedback besides the internet, I guess. But uh yeah you know you don't have people just saying this sucks you know <laughs> with nothing to follow up on they have like suggestions you know, and whatever suggestions and, like, and they ideas know and, and want to like prod things a little bit mm -hmm. and, and maybe say like well, well like what if you did this have you considered x or mm -hmm. y you know and, well I, I think one thing i really want to you know for any listeners out there um the main thing i want to communicate is 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 like if let's say you, you for whatever reason cannot go to art school what is what needs to be in your trick bag and how do you get there you know as in like how do you mimic the the group critique how do you you know uh, what are the skills and 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 uh, practical things you would want on your resume uh um to gather so that you could essentially be a graphic designer with perhaps no schooling well, you, all these skills are actually just kind of available for you to learn online. You know, um, being a graphic designer isn't just that you know how to use the Adobe Creative Cloud. You know, it, you do need to know that eventually, but or, you know, a similar program. But the ideas of design are not based within a computer program. It's something that you do on paper, hmm. you know, and um, I think a big part of it is that you just gotta practice, you know, the, that, that that's really it. You have to build your portfolio from the ground up and um, you want group critique, you gotta go online for it or you gotta find a local group that is interested in that kind of thing. You know, like a, I have my drawing class where we draw and uh, put things on the wall and it's very similar to the classroom experience that I had. 10 years ago right um these groups do exist and you have to engage in them and yeah i think the most part the most important part is just you gotta just try to do it without knowing how to do it first right and mm. then because then it'll be so much easier to learn later because I, you're like, well i kind of messed up all these different right. ways already and, and wait yeah you mess things up and then like when you do learn what went wrong or you do know how to do it right. You, can, you knew already how to how it went wrong to begin with. And I guess one way would also be uh, assuming the identity because everyone around you needs art in the sense that they need mm -hmm. something advertised in some way. And as yeah. you've seen in your friend group, uh, the various projects uh, you know that you've done amazingly at. By the way, you did a, oh, a great you. album cover for. Um, our friend Alex in uh, uh, his Indonesian gamelan um, album, uh, uh, I believe it's called Kiai Maruta. Uh, you did a project for me, Wine Hunks. Uh, oh, <laughs> way back when. <laughs> that's a uh, sword. Uh, the, um, I thought this is a Wine Hunks project right now. I know, yeah. no. I mean, it could be later, but uh, you know, that's uh, not for the YouTube uh, oh, yeah. censorship rules, you know, but no. Uh, you know, you've also done things like, for example, I've asked you, you know, a, a friend of mine's pet has passed away. And I said, you know, Oliver, can you please draw them? You know, and it's like they have hundreds of photos and they have mm -hmm. hundreds of renderings of this animal. But something about, you know, a hand drawn, you know, thought out, personalized um, 
craft is so much more meaningful you know and since mm -hmm. in the same with uh, the other projects and you know of course i would want you to do something for me as well take me through your process when someone approaches you and says oliver i need this i need this interpreted i need this image um what is uh what is your step-by-step -step? you know i mean you're on the job you know mm -hmm. well you know there, there's a um several things that come into consideration um you know you have to understand what the project actually is you have to know who the project is for whether it's whoever hired you or whoever the uh, the audience of the image is going to be okay um you know like uh so in in, in that regard like say a pet portrait, you know, I'm not, I'm not gonna, that type of person who wants a pet portrait is not going to want a grungy, you know, alt image, you know, sure. with, with like some kind of crazy filter. They don't want their pet interpreted of just like, well, maybe they might, they would probably ask for it, but like, you know, like as a memorial by and large, you kind of want a nice, soft, flowery image. But you're seeking you know? that out. You're right, seeking right. out those details. Yeah, ab yeah absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, if there, there's any confusion about it, you'd ask about it. And I'll, uh, you know, when, when it's time to do work for, like, say, a friend of ours, like Alex, you know, Alex likes things to look, have a little bit of a classical look, but also a little bit of a grungy look. And mm -hmm. I know that, you know, like, uh, so there's there's knowing the client, there's knowing the audience, you know, if I'm designing an ad for a, a business and, you know, they are a, a holistic medicine, med 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 eh, holistic medicinal uh, thing, then like, I'm going to make things look a little bit professional and softer and just like, right. hey, like, this is going to heal you, you know? And so you devote the, like the first part of the time to... Oh yeah, so just sussing out the, the character and the, the sussing out what the client wants and what the client needs and what the what their audience is. The audience you know, go. great, that's yeah. wonderful. Um, I wanted to ask, um, you know, kind of moving into our second section here, where we're getting a little bit personal here. Uh oh. Um, uh oh. You know, well, you know, so in art and in music. Uh, there seems to be this kind of uh, wrestling match between um, personal, uh, pure, unique expression mm -hmm. and this kind of utilitarian, purpose-driven, um, pragmatic, uh, you know, need as well. So, you know, and you have people on both extremes, like, for example, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, uh, music that's created by AI to just be poppy, right? Sure. Or, or like extremely avant-garde, um, you know, uh, composers of that, you know, of that nature. You know, so, so, and and I have seen evidence uh, of your artwork in both spheres. You know, mm -hmm. uh, you, well, you go into the gallery of your room and you have just these amazing uh, forays of, of uh, you know, just beautiful colors and everything, but. Uh, um, but you seem to strike that balance amazingly. I, and I wanted to ask you about that. Like, what, what do you think of that spectrum? Um, it's definitely a difficult one, you know, um, especially like, hmm. You, have you ever heard that like one phrase of just like, yeah, do what you love for a living and you never have to work for a day in your life or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, total shit um you know it's hard when like you have been designing things all day and you're on the computer you're penciling things down and everything right. and then like your day is done and then you want to do that kind of stuff for yourself like no you're tired you're you know right. like it's hard to keep that motivation up you know and um i don't know what i would have to say about that it's just sometimes i feel like it and sometimes i don't yeah. um yeah uh motivation's a tricky thing well with motivation being a tricky thing you know there is that quote that you've told me before uh uh that i wanted to discuss uh 
this idea that, or the quote is, there has never been an ambition, ambitionless person convicted of a war crime. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, I mean, there's some pushback there too. I mean, you can think of uh, times where neutrality has led to catastrophe as well, but. Uh, absolutely. I mean, you know, it definitely is like more of a facetious thing that I say than anything, you know, um, uh, just trying to like harp in on that energy of like, um, have you heard like the whole George Carlin quote of like, show me someone who's sitting around masturbating all day and I'll show you someone who's not causing any fucking trouble. And you know, like, <laughs> you know, and, uh, yeah. Do I think that ambition on itself is a bad thing? No, of course not. Um, I think that unchecked ambition with, a uh, you know, it just becomes pure greed when right. you start hurting people for your own gain. Like, yeah, that's absolutely a bad thing. Well, and yeah. I just, it always struck me because, you know, when you troll around on the internet, like I do constantly, I mean, half the stuff um, is always something to pump you up. You know, it's always some mm. sort, and I'm guilty of it. I've uploaded things like that. You know, uh, uh, and I mean it, and I do. I do think people need, uh, uh, you know, kind of like a, a boost of positivity. But you kind of do see a lot of this, um, oftentimes unchecked uh, uh, force, uh, saying like, "Do act on what you want," you know. And it's right. never been like, "Whoa, what? Wait a second, what is it exactly that you want? Is it?" Sure. Is it going to hurt and destroy the world? <laughs> because <laughs> in that case, yeah. we're not sure if you should want that, you know? And, and um, you know, I just wanted to ask you about, like, you know, it, it, in those times of, you know, where you have felt, you know, uh, like zero ambition, you know, what what is what is that like? You know, because I, oh. I know that a lot of people have experienced that as well. Sure, yeah, no, th there's a very good word for it, and it's called depression. Yo, and <laughs> <laughs> it's true. That's true. Um, but yeah, you, you know, the everyone has different struggles, and everyone has different ways of uh, um, surmounting that. And whether that requires medication, or if that requires just a change in your life circumstance, or or just it's just something you have to work through. You know, everyone's going to be a little bit different. Um, but yeah, I I, I think uh, at the other end of the spectrum, there is like this toxic positivity that you see. You know, like you you know people are just like in response to that just like well just don't be sad you know just you know do whatever you want just like yeah. life is wonderful all the time like that's not true it's you not know true. That's, no, that's not it, true it's like a facade uh, that uh, yeah uh that there are times in life that you do have to grapple with your feelings and your motivation and how you are coping with life and sometimes that's not very pretty well you know and i think that um you know, everything always comes in answers as far as like, um, you know, this 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 idea of ambition and self ex self expression comes in answer to a previous period that was more conservative and more conformative, mm. you know, and I think it kind of oscillates between the two, you know, but I think one thing I'm reminded of, you know, when you talk about um, the peaceful side of ambitionlessness is this uh, there's this chinese uh, philosophy wu wei uh, which means non-action you know and oftentimes it it, it it would be applied to you know how an emperor should rule or that kind of thing but it can also be applied to a, a personal philosophy mm -hmm. this idea that um the over excessive striving for and um and uh yearning for and pining for actually pushes away any kind of thing that you actually want you know uh, uh is that part of the philosophy you've thought I about mean, i or live by definitely believe in that um oh well, i guess i'd say it's uh, intriguing to me i i've never heard of it before and i'd have to look into it a little bit more but um yeah i i think that uh 
at least that's how it, how, how I relate to it, you know, on a initial basis is like, I, I think that a lot of people think life is a zero sum game. And in a lot of cases it is at least the way that we structure a society where like, if you want a job, you have to do everything for that job. And only one person can have that job, you know? Right. And so if we're all just striving to push each other down, like that creates an atmosphere and a real, just a culture where like people don't trust each other. People hate each other. People, you know, even if you're friends with each other, you're just waiting for the time to stab them in the back. And so you can push yourself up. So you can you push know. yourself up, you know? No, I, and that's one thing, you know, our generation, we're kind of this in between, you know, kind of in, we're, we're not, you know, we're not Gen Z. I mean, we're just at the very beginning of the millennials, you know, and we came from, you know, parents that experienced the 90s, you know what I mean, which was this yeah. kind of general growth period. Mm. So they, I feel like in their minds, got this idea of like, whatever you dream, you can make it oh, happen. Right. You know? Absolutely. And it's like, well, uh, is that reality? You know? right, yeah. Um, one, one thing I want to say, I think whatever your mentality is, it's working because having known you for almost 15, 18 years, I would say that there is this thread of grace and beauty that, oh. <laughs> no, really, that surrounds your life. Uh, the people that, have been attached to you the peop the things that you've done um have always just i don't know impressed me and others around you and i think the fact that you have kind of adapted this non-ambition um mentality has somehow maybe been the secret to it i don't know right here i wrote down i said uh explain the beauty in your life <laughs> 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 okay, explain the beauty of it. Uh, I was just thinking, of like, I, I guess, like, when I go home and I'm just shoving frozen food into my mouth and over the kitchen <laughs> sink, just grace and beauty. Yeah, that's very kind of you for, to say. I, I don't know if I would describe my own life as graceful and beautiful, but uh, um, uh. Yeah, you're right. we're gonna have to circle back on that i'm graceful and beautiful <laughs> i don't know man the things that you've kind of gravitated towards you have yeah. have always just been i don't know been well, nice. uh, you, you know uh, uh, i'll just take the compliment <laughs> <laughs> but I, I i will say you know like yeah I, i'm not gonna like show my ass in public i'm not gonna you know oh whenever things are going a little bit ugly or or maybe not the way I'd like them, I'm not necessarily always showcasing them and putting them on blast, you know, like you, in a lot of ways, you only see the things people want you to see, you know? Sure. No, that's true. That's true. Uh, um, okay. What well, one last question on, <laughs> on this, uh, uh, deep dive and all the <laughs> problems. One last one is, is, um, and, and this is just something, I, you know, being a novice in, uh, in the artistic realm, uh, you know, I, I want to know, a novice eternal, if you will. Uh, if you will. Uh, <laughs> it, it, what's it like in your brain? Like in the sense that, you know, you at one point decided that this was your passion, uh, art and that kind of thing. Uh, and, and I just want to know, like, you know, do, do colors and shapes and textures, do they speak a language to you? Um. A, a language you know there, there's definitely emotional resonance that comes from coming across something you know um that, that that's part of like being a graphic designer is like you always have to look for inspiration in like strange places so like even if just like a certain texture of concrete it seems to be kind of interesting like mm -hmm. you gotta take the time to snap that photo you know like yeah. you know you you know, if you look through my photo right now, it's just a lot of, a lot of stuff that I thought was cool at the time. <laughs> it was right. just like, oh, this is, 
this is a lot of data that didn't need to be used. But uh, uh, but at the same time, that stuff comes in useful later. What's, what what are the things in your phone? Tell me. I what? just 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 stuff I found momentarily cool, yeah. and then sometimes I look back on and go like, yeah, that was cool. Other times I go, uh, this, uh, maybe. Maybe I didn't need to take that photo. <laughs> <laughs> but still, yeah. I, I just see, uh, it's just interesting to me to just trying yeah. to put myself in the lens uh, right. of, of someone with, with uh, you know, right. that has that, uh, you know, um, that disposition to, 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 to be struck by and also mm -hmm. to notice these fine details because, sure. you know, the second you go to draw something, you realize, wait a second, have I even seen this at all? absolutely yeah. you know uh, and being observant is kind of key and i'm not always in that headspace but you know like um i guess look uh, an example of like what i think is cool is there's this auto rich pair shop near me where the letter on the building are so old that the, the paint itself is peeling off hmm. And so like what probably was just like a nice blocky font at one point just has become, it looks like a heavy metal like album lettering yeah. where it's all spiky and crazy and weird angles. And I think that's kind of cool. I want to kind of like go home and replicate that. And cool. yeah, that's all. See, I would have, yeah. I would have just walked by that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I think that's, uh, uh, and, and that's, you know, the channel novice eternal. It's this idea that, whatever you master, uh, quote unquote, right? Uh, you will be a novice at everything else. And there are many things to, to explore in this world. Uh, 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 and it'll never fully be there. You know, you can just take a little glimpse of everything. And, and that's kind of what I'm hoping to do here is mm -hmm. have people on that have lived this life and can try to help us uh, see through that their eyes yeah. for a little bit, you know? Um, uh, I think it's a wonderful idea. Oh, thanks, man. I also think it's a, it illustrates the difference between you and me, where you're more of an optimist, because I would have called the show Tutorial Hell. <laughs> <laughs> fair, fair. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, well, uh, that's the thing, is that this last segment, uh, you know, is if, no one's, if someone that, you know, if I do have an audience and they're not particularly interested in the guest, they can look forward to this last segment where I ask a string of mostly unanswerable questions, but they're questions that I'll ask of everyone. And that way I'll have, we'll have a little uh, Rolodex of answers. Um, let's start it right off. Right. Um, what justifies your choices? Uh, and by that, I mean, you know, what is a good act and what is an evil act? If, if those th mm -hmm. things exist and how, how do you judge that? Uh, well, you know, I tend to take kind of a simplistic view on these types of things, you know, evil acts are ones that hurt people, you know, and hurt people hurt. So, so he, well, human. Or, uh, cause harm, you cause know, harm. Cause, um, you could cut, you do evil things to a dog, you know, yeah. or any sort of living sentient creature. You could cause pain. Anything that causes pain or harm is an evil act. Um, okay. And, you know, when, once you start getting into gray areas of just like trying to do good things, but bad things happen like this it's hard to parse you know um right but what, what, what's a good thing for you i i mean that's a great question as well yeah. because I, I i was a great statement that you had earlier about you try to do good and it can actually cause evil yeah. uh, there's this great quote um uh, from the artist eminem you know he says i'm tired of committing so many sins you know, and, and that spoke to me because sometimes it just seems that life will put you in a situation where it's not easy to make what you would think be a good choice. And you end up digging this hole, you know, of things that you feel hurt the people around you because 
you're just trying to breathe you know right. <laughs> and um so an ultimate good may not mm. exist relative to to what i think is good is like that, you were saying cause causing no harm causing sure. the opposite of harm healing uh, whether it be through a gesture whether it through be uh, an understanding whether it be through a gift um yeah for sure i i mean well i myself have lived a life of graceful beauty and I've, uh, I've witnessed i've, I've <laughs> borne witness to that so, uh, luckily i i i've not had to make such hard choices in my life you know i Same. I, I, I come I, from a very privileged state as well you know I, i'd like to say like well if it came between like me and someone else like of course i would choose someone else i don't know i don't i've never been in that situation right. you know right. like um who, who knows what would happen like when instinct kicks in or something you know this is perfect because it asks i want to ask this life philosophy question where where you know i believe in this kind of external uh fairness in the mm. sense that if something is owed to me i don't need to hurt someone to get it uh but that's bec that's coming from an an unjustified belief in the fairness of the universe now let me ask you this is the universe chaotic or is there such a thing oh. as karmic energy no I, I i would any day of the week i will tell you that the universe is absolutely chaotic okay interesting yeah, yeah um no the, the the only thing that is fair is just what we can make fair ourselves i see I see uh um well in that case what is consciousness oh well <laughs> um uh consciousness like that's one of the biggest questions of our age um but luckily you have a graphic designer here <laughs> yes i want to know because this there is no answer to this tell me as a graphic designer what is consciousness, man? Because uh, as we established before, you're you're walking around and noticing things is very different than mine, and so so sure, your I, answer is going to be just as valid as anyone's. I I mean, there is a great mystery on what's going on in our brains. Uh, in in for some reason, the way that our brains are shaped and the way that our neurons are interacting and the way this sparks of electricity or is being sent all over the place make us be able to see and absorb the world in a way that seems to be significant amongst the animal population okay uh, well, so hold on so 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 would you say there is something separate than matter antimatter um well you know. <laughs> okay yeah uh, touche um, well are, are you thinking that like is there something like a spirituality that exists amongst us well yeah uh essentially i'm asking yeah I, uh, yes essentially the question being is consciousness a combination of neurons firing I or believe. is it something that inhabits a brain? Um, I think it is a byproduct of what the brain is doing. Okay. In that case, do we have free will? Do we have free will? I asked that, uh, you know, and this, these are yeah. related, you know, because, oh, absolutely, yes. you know, with, with entropy, uh, things get more scattered, the neurons get more uh, proliferated. Um, so, in those, in you know, uh, in, in scientific circles, people would say there's absolutely no free will because everything just the dominoes fell from the Big Bang till now, and they're going right. to continue. Yeah, and everything's just a big series of chemical reactions. And, um, you know, I, I, I go back and forth on it. You know, like I, I think ultimately we do have free will. You know, I. I think that so much of our lives are preconceived you know you can't help where you were born you know your zip code basically says how you will do in life 
Um, but I, I think that you do have a choice. You know, you do all, you can always choose to change your life in significant ways. Right. You know, um, but so far I'm hearing two slightly different things because right. you have mentioned, you know, you and I have both come from, from privileged backgrounds. You know, we grew mm. up in the, in the Northern suburbs of, of Chicago in an affluent area and, and, and this and that. Uh, uh, and, but, and you also mentioned your zip code, you know, really determines a lot of things, you know, but of course we've seen examples of people coming from certain zip codes or wherever and living healthy, happy, amazing, incredible lives. And we've seen people from our zip code <laughs> uh, uh, not do so uh, well as far as health and as far as happiness and whatever it is. Mm. Um, but how much of that is genetics? And, and, and right. Are I, you separate from your genetics? Can I, you again, make choices? I, I, I would say genetics is one of those factors that like you have no control over right. and you know, it, I, I, again, like, I, I don't know too much about it, but, and I don't know what separates nature from nurture in this situation, but like people with angry parents become angry people themselves, you know, and how much of that is really up to them, you know? Right. But I, I, I think that sometimes like if they can recognize that fact, they have an opportunity to change that nature about themselves, you know? Well, and the beautiful thing is, is that Let's say there is no free will if it's unpredictable. You know what I mean? It's unpredictable sure. how someone may influence it. But ultimately, I think you know, what you're saying is you still have this ability to hold a memory or a scene in your mind and make some sort of choice, right? Sure. Despite, right? And that's, is that what I'm kind of. Uh, I, I mean, yeah, you, you could take in all the information around you and you could realize that you are part of a system that sucks and you can make informed choices about how to change yourself and your surroundings to, well, you know, this isn't also just for good. You could also take in all that information and just be a real shit and like, oh, I guess I'll just go gambling. You know, like, <laughs> Sure. Yeah. I, I, well, well, so, okay. I know I promised I wouldn't get personal anymore, but, uh, <laughs> you know, you had a choice. I had a choice, man. You had a choice. Here we are. <laughs> like, uh, you have a philosophy that you, governs your life now. Uh, like one overwhelming one. No, I, I, I would say it's a, like 1000 Wikipedia articles about philosophy stapled together. Okay. It, well, whatever it is, whatever, how many <laughs> articles it is, it encompasses, how deep it goes, it changed at one point, right? I suppose. I'm curious, what, are, what is your validation loop? As in, you know, things happen to you, right? Mm -hmm. You experience life and you make adjustments to your philosophy and how you digest that life. Sure. And I was just, I was just wanted to look at that. What, what, how does that loop work for you? What, what, how do you oh. discern things that you wanna keep uh, as part of your new character and things you say, well, I'm gonna let go of that or I'm gonna ignore that? For sure. Um, well, I, I guess that myself, like, you know, I, I think it kind of ties into the idea of a chaotic universe where like, say something bad happens to me. I, I wonder like what elements of this were under my control, you know, how did I go wrong here? What could I have done better and try to use it as a learning experience? And, you know, in, in all cases, this is like all those things that happen in varying degrees, you know, maybe like you know, if a car drives into my house and that's not really something I did wrong, right. you know, if I drove into someone else's house, that's not something I did wrong. I'm paying attention, Oliver. Hold on a second. Uh, 
Well, so I wanted to ask about that because I think I think a lot of uh, people's um, kind of determination as to their philosophy hinges on their tolerance mm. uh, uh, for for pain or for bad. Or so, so 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 when you say when something bad happens to you, sure. What what is the uh, range there? What is that? What does it take for something happening for you to consider it bad? And what does that mean? I mean, you, you know. Uh, uh, that tolerance level shifts as well, you know, right. like if there's like a big outsized event, then like, you know, that's easy to like observe, you know, like then there are other times where it's just like, oh, I haven't had an emotion for three weeks, you know, like that's <laughs> also a bad thing, you know, like, like <laughs> and that, that, that's harder to, to discern, you know, um, yeah, yeah, life comes at you in many different ways. Last question. Okay. It seems to me that this this human uh, endowment, you could call it, uh, you know, whatever it is, it's a needy thing. And with it also comes a lot of potential. And I want to ask, what does it mean to be a fully realized human? <laughs> uh, 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 what, what does it take to satisfy the potential we've inherited? You have a TV. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, hmm. You know, that's a very important question and, and a question that really needs like huge examining right now as, as like uh, just more and more people are isolated, you know, like not just because of COVID, but like you know, there's not really a sense of community anywhere in the world. Like, but like, I think a big part is that you need people in your life, you know, mm -hmm. like um, you, you, you do need friends, you do need relationships, you do need all these things. You also just need to have some sort of self-worth and you need to determine where that comes from, um, whether that's hobbies or, you know, I, I think that would get some pushback from people, but like maybe you get that from your job and I think that's fine. Yeah. You know, um, you know, uh, um, that's up to you to decide like what makes you feel good about like being a productive, oh, yeah, be productive in your community, you know, like, uh, um, yeah. And, uh, and fuck, it wasn't a joke. You, you, you need a TV. <laughs> <laughs> I, and, and, uh, and, uh, and, and well, I mean, so, well, so I mean, well, cool. 